languages and culture of First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and all First Peoples of Canada, whose presence continues to enrich our lives. And now, and with great pleasure, and in alphabetical order, I would like to introduce our guest speakers. They are leaders in our community, and were often the go-to spokespersons whenever the media needed educating. Jackie Ford has spent much of her life pursuing social justice and advocating for the equal application of human rights. Jackie has over 25 years of experience in senior leadership positions in the nonprofit sector and is currently serving as the branch, branch manager, social development for the city of Edmonton. Jackie devotes considerable time to volunteerism. She is a member of the International Women's Forum and was the inaugural chair of the Women's Advisory Vo Voice of Edmonton, WAVE. Jackie is the president of the Good Hearts Transplant Foundation and is on the board of the Ribbon Rouge Foundation and the Edmonton Community Legal Center. In 2013, Jackie was named one of Edmonton's top 100 women in business. And in 2014, she received the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Edmonton Pride Festival. Murray Billet is well known as a human rights activist, conflict resolution specialist, educator, and advocate for the GLBTQ communities, a former member of the Alberta Review Board and the Edmonton Police Commission, past educator and labor relations officer for United Nurses of Alberta. He has spent decades on advocacy work on various boards and committees. Thank you, please. Take it away. I want to go ahead, Jackie. Sure, I'll just start by saying, wow, it's so nice to see some familiar faces, even on, you know, it's been so long since we've all been in the same space. So just scrolling through the pictures, it's so nice to see you. Um, and thank you to Sage and the Pride Center for hosting us today and inviting us. I'm really excited today to talk with and with Murray, because one, I never know what Murray's going to say. And uh, two, I think he's hyped this, this uh, presentation a little bit when he was on CBC the other day. So uh, I will, as always, just kind of go with the flow. You are getting me and Murray unscripted. So uh, I'm hoping there's lots of questions. I'm hoping there's lots of dialogue. Um, and with that little introduction, I'll let Murray take over. Yeah, good morning, everybody. And, and as Jackie said, it's it's this is almost like going to Disneyland, getting to see other people. It's 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 all, always fun to connect with, with our crew. And and uh, I today we're going to go through not just educating the media. Um, Jackie and I have both done a whole hockey bag of this stuff over over the years, and uh, we want to share with you a few tips and tricks and processes. To, uh, to engage with the media and uh, maybe some do's and don'ts because I, uh, I know I've screwed up more than once. I'll tell you a quick story that I mentioned on, uh, on the CBC interview. When I first started doing media, I ended up doing it because nobody else would. Every, you know, everybody's going, you talk to them. No, no, you talk to them. And, and I'm going, well, this is just Edmonton, I'll be okay. And uh, the story went national. So you have to be aware when you're starting to engage with the media, you don't know where it's going to go. I mean, uh, the fancy term these days is digital exhaust. So when you're on social networking and, and in the media, uh, you better be out and your family better be aware that your, your face and your voice is going to be there. And, and uh, that's really important, you guys. It's, I think it's even more important now to bring all our voices. Jackie and I've done a lot for a lot of years and I'd like to see any one of you step up and, and, and start to do more media. And, and we tried to get Larry on, but CBC was going, we want the old commissioner guy. And, and that's got to change. You know, when we say we're going to engage with the media, it's going to be these spokespeople. And, and hopefully today, Jackie and I can give you uh, some ideas uh, if you are speaking with the media, how to do that, how to prepare different uh, different processes, and uh, I'll, I'll be happy with anyone 
If they want to deal with the media and want to chat with me offline, happy to have that conversation with you to, to help you understand a little bit more and, and uh, how best to put your best face forward, so to speak. Mm -hmm. That's true. And just to pick up on what Murray said about um, you better be out. That's true. Um, but it's darn, we need to tell our own stories. We can't let um, others tell our stories. And in order for us to, to do that, we have to be out. And wherever that leads on the digital world and, um, and traditional media, um, I'm, I'm really tired of those who aren't in our community trying to tell our stories. And I'll just put a little plug in there. There's very few openly uh, LGBTQS plus media people in this country. Um, there's, I don't know that there's any in Edmonton. I've never asked them any of them, but there's a few national uh, reporters for print media in particular. But I really, we really need to open this up so that we're telling our own stories and that those who are interpreting those stories have some of our lived experience too. So with that, we'll start with some of the technicalities. So um, the top 10 things, and Murray and I'll go through them really quickly because I'm hoping there's, there's questions and discussion, is it the, still the traditional way to, to influence the media is if you have an issue, is to have a media conference. And it's, it's not the easiest thing in the world to set up and it's changed over time in terms of, uh, it's much more, uh, it used to be you would call a media event or a press conference and you go stand in a building and reporters would come and stand around you, put the microphone up and away you go. It's not that way anymore. There's digital, there uh, digital media that need to be included in a lot of these. Uh, the influence of people who write blogs and people who have podcasts, they are media. They're new media, but they are media. Uh, along with the traditional media. Uh, setting up the, the event, you wanna make sure that you have someone handling that side of the, of the event, the conference. Uh, who's gonna make sure that people who are on the phone or on Zoom or LinkedIn properly, who's going to deal with the media who might be in the room? Who's gonna do the follow-up because there's always a follow-up. So someone to manage the process while the spokespeople and the spokespeople um, should be the subject matter experts. Um, while those folks can, can, can think of and concentrate on their messages and why they're there, you need a technical person around to help you out. And you need to make sure you invite the right, not and right, that's the wrong term. You need to invite the media and uh, make sure that you don't miss out on those ever, ever more important non-traditional media sources. In addition to that, um, you guys can see this little instrument in front of me. The quality of the media you provide can make all the difference in the world. So, for example, if you're dealing with the radio, they'd much rather have you on a landline than on a cell phone, for example, because the, the uh, sound quality isn't quite as good. So when you're doing these press conferences, one of the things that is often used, and, and whether it's, it's, if it's in person, you're going to have a folder for each media person, or these days it's more likely to be a digital copy of the relevant documents that you wanna highlight. So you may have a fact sheet, you may have the, the names of people that they can contact subsequent to. Uh, there may be some, um, bullet points that you want to attach, perhaps an educational sheet that you want to attach. Perhaps you're not, you're the executive director, but the president of the board wants to say something. So in that media kit, there may be a comment from when Jackie was executive director of the Y, she was generally the spokesperson. So you want to have that press kit together. That's always an important uh, component of it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and that kit really helps those who may not be able to attend as well. So if it's digital or if they, uh, those, the media who couldn't be there, those press, kit, press kits really help. Because quite often a couple of days later, um, actually one of my staff is going out on a media event today of, of CBC Radio, I think, to talk about a press release that we sent out four days ago. So today is the day it's going to happen. So those, the, the kits really make a difference. And of course, the press release. 
I'm a big fan of, uh, there's, there's elements you have to have. Where is it gonna happen? What time is it going to happen? Is it, you know, is it live streamed? Is it all those things, the very technical aspects of that, that conference or that media conference. But also you have to tell them why you're there and uh, you want to have just enough information that they're intrigued by what is going to happen. Like what is the issue? and who is going to speak about that issue and why that person is particularly suited to speak about that issue. So if it's, um, uh, I'll just, uh, uh, today, or uh, not today, the, the media release that we did the other day that they're doing media on today, the, the issue is around transit safety. So who's there? The people who are actually doing the transit safety and, and what their relationship is to that. So, but don't give away everything in the release because then there's no reason for anybody to show up. Ideally, for me, one of the things that I've always struggled with over the years is who's going, you know, when they, when they call me, I'm not a trans person. I'm not a person of color. Uh, there's so many issues within our community that, that I don't feel completely equipped to properly respond and, and properly portray our community and reflect the diversity, the reality of the diversity that is within our community. So that's why it's it's important, I think, for, for more of us to get involved from our alphabet soup. So if we have an issue around BIPOC or Indigenous or trans, that we can say, for example, if it's, if it's a, an issue that in, involves mental health within our community, we want Larry there. He's got the, the rich history and institutional intelligence to properly explain that story. So um, that's some of the work we have to do in our community is, is to, to train up and, and get more people uh, ready to, to bring their voice. And, and Murray, can I pick up on that? Because it was, you reminded me of, of the, uh, the media storm around the GSA issue in the country when, or in the province. And I remember getting a call from you saying the media is really looking for someone to talk about GSAs. And I was of a mature age at that point in time, just you know, a couple of years ago, but, uh, but I didn't feel equipped to talk about that issue. One, because I was, I was a long way from school and two, I didn't have children that were attending school or children at all for that matter. And I remember you saying to me, the media is looking for a woman to talk about this. And we, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna gender this to a certain degree. My experience is that um, women in, in our community are less likely to stand up and speak out. And that hurts my heart. I see it happening a little bit more in the younger, the young folk that are coming up and out. Um, but I, there is a real gap about, a gap around women in our community of our age speaking out loud and telling our stories. Um, so I did do that media and uh, um, it was fine, but it was really hard that day to find anyone to talk about that. I don't know if you remember that call, Marie, but because I was like- well, I sure do. Mm -hmm. So often, I, it was either me or Michael Fair and, and, and that's not fair. You know, we're, we're, just, we're just two older, older white guys that, that have been kind of on the, on the front line and uh, I'm going to be doing a, a gig tonight with something called Nerd Night, and I'm going to be talking about the right, the responsibility, and obligation to bring our voice. And and I think we have to take that more seriously with our diverse community, particularly. Um, and you know, we're the seniors, and and you know, they, you know, we we as we grow older, we we become less relevant. And, and we have to bring our voice and it can't be just mine. So I'll, I'll move on maybe to the next step and that's, mm -hmm. that's speaking with the media. Mm -hmm. So you, you want to be well briefed to, to what, what are your talking points? What are the salient parts that you want to drive home on a particular issue? So whoever is going to be doing that, you want to work with your organization, your board, your executive director. That, so you are nailing the points you don't want to be dealing with the media if you're not sure, because they're going to have some damn good questions and you better be ready to answer them. 
I know uh, one of the other things that happens in, in back in the days of, of, of my work with the police commission and my work with Del and Dream, we'd end up with, with many media. And then all of a sudden you're standing there and you've got five microphones and seven TV cameras coming in at you. That's called a scrum. And Jack, have you done, I'm sure you've done more than one of those. Yeah, they're never my favorite. I don't do them as well as you do, Murray. Yeah. <laughs> Well, here's, here's my little tips and tricks for media scrums. I'm paying attention to the media that I know and trust because you get to know who's in the media mm -hmm. and who really understands what's going on. So I tend to kind of watch for them. I also listen for the right question. So I can cherry pick the question that I want to add, that I want to respond to. So that's one thing. And then if nobody's asking the question, I'll just pick somebody, get them to ask the question. And then I would simply say, that's a really good question. But the most important point on this particular issue is as follows. So it gives you a chance to put your agenda, your voice to the front of the line to address the issues that, that you're there to, to, uh, to put to the media. So that's, 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 it's always worthwhile that way, but. Uh, that's one that's that is really intimidating until you get used to it. I, I, I've done enough of it now that I'm I actually kind of prefer Scrum because I can control it a little bit better than just sitting behind a desk and and letting them pop questions at me. I can can I, I feel like I'm a little more in control um, that way. So I don't know about you, Jack. You might have some ideas on that as well. Yeah, scrums, the adrenaline's pumping, The and to be honest, they've changed for me because um, I used to be the CEO of the YWCA and I had a, a, a long leash. I was never once told my board of, by my board of directors that I could proudly proclaim that I, that we were a feminist organization and that we, that our position was our position. I now work for the government, the a government, the city of Edmonton. So uh, I did a scrum last year on, or last winter around our uh, temporary shelter at the convention center. <clears throat> and I clicked back into the, to my old ways and days where I was talking about the particulars of that shelter. And I gave my opinion on a couple of things, nothing terrible, but it was off script for the city. So I did get the little call later that day saying, you know, you're not supposed to give your opinion. The city's position is X. Um, so I got, I wouldn't say my knuckles wrap, but it reminded me because there is a great deal of adrenaline running and I never ever will mislead the media or not tell them or not answer a question in a way that's, I just don't like bureaucracy. I know it makes no sense because I work at the government, but but those scrums for me now have a very different way. I, I have a very different way of dealing with them, very similar to what you do. But I also then have embedded in my brain, because the city does that, all my talking points. Mm -hmm. Which you gotta remember though, don't just stick to your talking points. Don't say the same talking point the same way over and over and over again. Like our position is. A, B, C, our position. Once you say that three times, they know that you, that you know, you've lost the media and you know that you've lost the message. So do, you can use the same speaking points, but you need to reframe them as you answer the questions. And any media individual that's dealing with you, if they really know what they're doing at the end of any media conference, whether it's a scrum or anything else, they should ask and generally do, is there anything that I've missed or is there anything else you want to add? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, again, choose your words wisely in that opportunity. Don't forget that words shape consciousness. So words have consequences. So certainly choose them, uh, choose your words wisely. And the other thing is anybody that's going to do this, you're representing a lot of people but you're also representing yourself you're you're building your brand you're you are bringing your integrity and i'm not being big-headed here but part of part of what's happened in my journey in the media is my work in the media has opened the doors for me to get on some of the boards i don't think the police commission would have happened if the city wouldn't have known me as somebody in the media that that 
that's that brings some common sense you know so and and speaks with with a measured tone because if you get angry in the media you'll you, your integrity's out the window you guys and you get you know and it's it's no different than when you're doing advocacy work and we're going to shift into that and we can bring questions but bringing your own integrity and your own brand because if 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 you get angry and rant and rave like you see some people do on on television you you lose your audience pretty quickly mm -hmm. And uh, I can tell you that that my style and demeanor has opened hearts and doors, um, and that's because I've made some mistakes along the way. I I I don't like the angry Murray. Nobody wants to see this old boy really really angry. And I I pride myself. I've only lost control a few times in my life, in, in a couple of boardrooms and a couple of private meetings, but never in the media. It's it's you're you're going to lose control and you'll lose respect. And your your brand and those that you're speaking on behalf of, you're not going to make anybody proud doing doing it that way, Jackie. That's absolutely true, and I think that comes to around media outlets <clears throat> because the media landscape has changed substantially. Again, online, um, when you're in those media events, there are more than just what used to be the local reporters. There's now that you have online and some of those local reporters work for um, outlets that aren't exactly what you want. Like there's the, the there's rebel media has a presence in this city. There's um, maybe you remember, is it Western standard is, you know, sounds like a regular old news outlet, but it's not. So there are people and, or not people, there are organized media organizations and bloggers and, uh, and uh, uh, podcasters that don't necessarily follow the rules of engagement that the traditional media does. And I have seen, I've touch wood, I've never had to do it myself, but I have seen some people be thrown off their game by the kind of of questions those particular outlets may ask and the way they ask them. So it has changed. That's not to say that's not to say you shouldn't answer their questions, but you got to take a deep breath and say, here we go and keep your cool. And on, on that point, you don't always have to answer the question. You can say mm -hmm. that's a really good question. And you know what? I'm not real sure what the answer is, but let's connect a little bit later and I'd be happy to, to get a response for you. So don't mm -hmm. feel, don't guess at what you're going to respond. You know, make sure you know what you're talking about. So don't feel bullied or pressured into answering or responding. And the other thing is, if I get any kind of media person that doesn't respect me and tries to bully or push me, I, I don't put up with, with that kind of bullshit. I, I will not uh, engage because sometimes the first rule of engagement is don't, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's so, absolutely true. Yeah, so maybe we can open up to questions for a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, Jan, if you're still moderating, do you want to open up to questions? And then I want to spend a little bit of time about advocacy, not just within the community, but advocacy as seniors when you're dealing with healthcare and, and your own personal family affairs, how to advocate, advocate for yourself and keep track of things. So uh, Jan, is, do you wanna, if there's questions, maybe Jackie and I can respond to a few questions before we moved on to the, the next little bit. Certainly, let's open it up for questions. I'm at a little bit of a disadvantage because I can't see many of you. <laughs> this, um, so I can't, maybe we could use the chat room if you uh, wanna speak and we can acknowledge you that way. I do agree with um, what you said about um, that you have to be out, like you have to be so out. And I had no idea until I got into this role as the executive director here that I had to tell my family that, okay, I'm gonna be called, like get media calls. You better be prepared if your friends um, come to you with any comments or, or anything about what I'm saying. And so it was really, um, it really hit me that I wasn't only representing the Pride Center, I was representing, I call it the kingdom of the Pride Center, because we are so varied in our community here. And then I was also representing myself as, um, as a brand. Um, one thing that hasn't come, so I feel like I've, I'm 
I've handled media fairly well so far, but um, I've had a friend in the community, um, a, a, an academic say, well, Don, what about when the really hard questions come? So what are your suggestions around, um, yeah, so what happens if Rebel, Rebel Media comes to me and says, um, hey, we just want to talk to you, or Ryan Jesperson, as a real life example, um, who says that they're an ally, uh, but, you know, could potentially put me in a position where um, the ask is not, may not be in the best interest of the Pride Center. So say, for example, uh, if I'm asked to be on a panel, and there's uh, and it's on a particular issue, let's say it's conversion therapy, and there are, uh, I don't know, pastors, and then there's me. Um, <laughs> would it be advisable to go into a difficult situation to give clarity to a particular question or issue that addresses our community? Or is it more, you know what, I don't think you're the right fit for us. I don't think I'm going to go ahead with this interview. Jackie? I would say the answer is yes and no. Um, it, you don't, it, again, you're, you're part of an organization, so you don't have to respond to every inquiry and you don't have to put the organization or yourself in a position where more harm may happen than not. So when it comes to those sort of opinion pieces with Jespo or those panels that occasionally happen, you don't have to, you don't have to go. What I would say though is really important for, um, you can't avoid a crisis. So if you're invited on that show because something is going on with your organization, avoiding it's never a good idea. So um, all my years in uh, nonprofit, I always made sure that my key communicators and myself as the executive director invest in media training. Um, and there's different styles of communication media training, but you need that. But if it's a real crisis, then have some, have some money in the bank or volunteers who can help you with crisis communication because crisis communication is a whole different level of of uh, communicating and it can happen to any one of our any organization but um it it is in our community it's more likely to happen that there is a crisis that we need to respond to so that's my two cents murray what do you think yeah i concur with jackie completely i was very fortunate during the del and friend uh seven year journey i had calder bateman communication behind me so they, they made me sound much, much better and much more effective than I really was because if I didn't have them, because this was getting not just national attention, it was getting international attention. And the other thing is sometimes engaging with, with those uh, communities that dismiss us. I, I had fun on CBC and this one was held at the U of A in person at, at, at one of the um, lecture theaters. So it was CBC and there was a Reverend somebody or other and uh, we, we were discussing the proprieties of, of our community versus religion. And this minister, the reverend priest, I'm not sure, Bill, help me out here. Uh, at any rate, he, he referred to me as a practicing homosexual. And I turned to him and I said, actually, I disagree with you. I'm not practicing. I'm very good at it. I'm a good <laughs> homosexual. So it's an opportunity to, to really have some fun and in a fun way, you're not you're not making fun of them, but by virtue of, of you know something that simple, it's an educational moment that that gets people giggling and drives home a point in a in a delicious way. Mm -hmm. Oh we wow! Thank questions. you. Um, we have two questions from the chat room, so we we'll start with Bill Doyle, and then we'll move to Blair McKinnon. Go ahead, Bill. Thank you. Uh, in my previous job in Saskatchewan, I have experienced dealing with traditional media outlets, but uh, no experience dealing with non-traditional media outlets. I'm wondering if there's any tips of uh, 
hooking into who that might be in any particular situation, other than word of mouth being connected with a trusted source on the inside who can clue you into that? Are there any tips to, to know who to communicate with to, to get the word out there? I'd suggest Google is your, your, a good friend of yours. Find out who the person is, what their organization, dig into their digital exhaust, uh, find out who they are, see if you can find a bio, go into LinkedIn. It's, 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 all, it's real easy to start creeping on people that are, that are involved. Um, and if you're if you're never sure, um, call people whose whose views you trust. You give me a call or, or Jackie a call. Um, I think that's that's that would be my advice, Jackie. Yeah, and believe it or not, Twitter can be your friend um, because all of those non-traditional media use or almost all of them use Twitter to to amplify their voice. Uh, so you the search function on Twitter is fantastic. So you don't have to read all the the yucky stuff on Twitter. But if you have a, a search uh, window for, uh, or look through like LGBTQ2S plus Edmonton or seniors queer, like pick a few search uh, terms and use that because while, you know, Jesperson's a, 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 an a extraordinary example of digital media gone mainstream, if I can use that term, he, the rest are really just out there slugging away, trying to get people to listen to their podcast and, and uh, subscribe to their blog. So they use uh, quite often Twitter is a big, is a place that I look for them. Ryan's, and then, pretty, listen, Ryan's yeah, a pretty reliable uh, ally as well. I, I've been on his program on Chad and I know him personally. Mm -hmm. So I, I, Me uh, too. Yep. If, mm -hmm. you ever want, if you ever want to engage with Ryan, he'll certainly give you a fair shake and, and, uh, um, bring your voice up as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, get you, Bill. Thanks. Great. Okay, Blair, go ahead. Sure, yeah, I had a question for <clears throat> both Jackie and Murray. When you're doing <clears throat> a one on one interview, say like Murray, you did with Rod Kurtz on CBC, and you have an issue that a main theme that you're putting forward, but the media has an agenda um, that they want to do a different slant, and and often it's a controversial one. What are your tips for moving them away from the slant they want to the message that you're trying to get across? Sometimes they're at odds. Well, as I mentioned earlier, you can say that's a really good question or that are, that's a really good point, but what's important to us or to me or to the Pride Center or to our organization is ABCDEFG. Um, and, and the nice part about that, that gets your voice to the front of the queue. You get your points out. Um, and if, if, if they come at you, you don't need to answer every question. You, you can say, I'm not sure how to respond to that. So happy to talk to you uh, afterwards. So as, as I mentioned earlier, the first sometimes the first rule of engagement is don't. Mm -hmm. And the other, for those uh, traditional media that still have staff, quite often the producer of that show is going to call you ahead of time and say, hey, this is what we want to talk about. And this is where, we're, and they'll, they'll do a little background, inter not interview, but just talking to you to see what the story could or should be. You can tell very quickly if they're about to go off in the Netherlands of some, something that you don't want to talk about. You can pull them back there. But it has happened to me, and it was CBC a few years ago. We went through that, and then the question I got was just was trying to look for a hook for a good story. And I, I challenged the interviewer, and I said, I don't think that's the problem. I don't think this is a good way to frame this issue, and then went on to my points. But tip, it doesn't happen often, but it, there's some media that occasionally just need, need the story or try to tell the story as they see it. One other thing before we shift gears here, remember that if you've got a mic on or if you're in an interview, make sure you know that the, if there's a hot mic, you don't want to think that the program's over and say, well, that guy was out of his goddamn line. <laughs> you know, so you want to be very careful. There's a great story about a guy who was making a presentation at, at some big hall and he forgot to turn his mic off. He was up at the podium forgot to turn his mic off, 
went to the bathroom with his mic on. So you can imagine what that would be like. <laughs> so be aware of this, your mic on, mic off moments. Yes. So Sydney had a question in the chat room. Uh, she's asking, how do you avoid sounding like a spin artist? <laughs> Sometimes you are. But it's, it's, it's the way you speak and the way, and taking a public speaking course. So you're articulate and, and if, if you bring your passion and you bring your common sense, you will deliver the message that you're trying to deliver. Uh, um, people have called me a spin artist. I get called all kinds of things. I'm okay if that's what they wanna call me for standing up for what I believe is right, what I believe is important. I'm okay with that, but the important part is to, to get the words falling out of your face in a relatively articulate way is, is, is the important part. And I have to say, I love spin artistry. Um, in, uh, it's been a few years, but I have on occasion been the spokesperson for political parties. I've been involved in politics forever. And uh, it's a lot of fun because you take, you know, you get some jousting here and there with it. but. I think the word spin is, is, has a connotation that, you know, those political people on power and politics this afternoon are going to spin for their party. And that's okay. That's, that's their job. And it, it is fun if you get to do it. But I would say more of a lens, like when I speak about social issues and when I speak um, on behalf of organizations, that is our spin. That is our story. And it's, and it's my job to get that story out in a way in the way that we would like, we and I would like it to be told. So uh, political spinsters are fun. Uh, spinsters, uh, uh, that was, I don't know, probably, <laughs> yeah, I am and I was, uh, but, uh, but that's a lot of fun. But I think spin sometimes doesn't, doesn't, I'd rather use a different word. Michael Fair is good at this. He's done yeah, tons he of media and, and, and you listen to him and, and Michael just, delivers the message and this is the way it is and that's that and mm -hmm. we don't need to ever apologize for that so don has you, anything you wanted to add on that on on this media piece uh just a, I, I think um um i try not always successful um to have two or three points i know i want to get across regardless of what questions get asked and 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 have learned how I can make that happen, no matter what question gets asked. How I can make sure, and and if I get those <clears throat> those two or three points across, then I don't care about the rest of it. You know, I'll I'll go with the flow a bit. But but um, um, I've learned that pre thinking or not that, um, and and I think it, it, it to kind of keep away from sounding too spin. My, my concern is spin mainly with corporations and companies and that. It's like, oh my God, you know, aren't saying nothing. We're kind of saying that. Um, or that, well, we got to balance it. It's like, oh no, you're favoring the, the status quo. Give me a break. The kind of thing that is to, to try to find a way to, to say something that, 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 that personally relates to, to whatever the issue is so that, that, that sounds a bit more real. <clears throat> That's all. You're, you're building your brand and building your message is what you're doing. And, and, yeah. and again, just a reminder, it's you're not just building the brand of your organization, but your own personal brand in, in terms of your delivery demeanor, um, bringing your integrity and, and respect. And, and you're, you're also showing people how to treat you. You don't want to let somebody kind of run over you. Either. And Michael Fair has a hell of a personal brand. Just saying. Yeah. All of that and more. I'm not sure it's positive, but whatever. <laughs> Dawn has given us uh, her uh, experience. She says she likes to request a pre-interview to get an idea. And if it doesn't resonate, she won't engage. Now, are there any other questions? If there's no other questions, I'll just I'll just jump in real quick. And uh, I wanted to talk to everybody a little bit about um, advocacy for yourselves, your and your loved ones. When you're dealing with any kind of problem, whether it's 
with a bank, with with a retail store, with the police. You're you're in get into a battle with the grocery store manager, advocating for yourself and and ensuring that that you have all of the tools necessary. And the the this is one of your friends. So when you, for example, and I, I'll use my own personal situation, my parents are are. 92 years old and my sister and I take them to all their medical appointments. We both have books and we keep track of what doctor we see, what time we see them, what I call W5, who, what, where, when, why. And I actually add an extra W and it's, whoa, back up, do you have everything? So what you wanna have when you're advocating for yourself, you wanna have that clear historical review because if this turns into something more, and it's ongoing, like a medical health issue, you can say, let's see, what doctor did I see this spring and what did they say and what medications did they suggest? So having that historical review of dates, times, places, people, all of those things are really important when it comes to advocating for yourself uh, in, in any circumstance. Um, Jackie? Yeah, and that's a good one. I think we're all, you know, we're on the, we're at the SAGE meeting and we're all uh, aging incrementally. Um, more and more that becomes important, especially around healthcare. Um, as we age, seniors become less visible as in the healthcare system, seniors become, well, we may be the biggest users of healthcare. We're quite often not seen as, in the same, we don't get the respect we deserve. And I would say as queer seniors, our health needs are different. And to have medical care and attention that takes that into consideration is so important. So write it down. If, if it's not going the way you want it to do, you know, it's not as easy to, to switch doctors or, or healthcare um, providers as, as, as it could be. But there are avenues to take those those um, experiences and frustrations and advocate for yourself at other levels of the healthcare system. And don't ever forget that. Just um, it's we, you know, as I said, I'm going to repeat myself. But I, as a as a out lesbian, it took me a long time to find a doctor who actually understood what that meant and what that means in terms of healthcare. And then she retired, which you know wasn't very helpful. So I haven't found another one yet. But I think we deserve to have whether again healthcare, banking, landlords, police, our needs. Uh, we we need to let them know that our needs aren't necessarily the same as everybody else's. Another cool example I'll I'll give you. Um, we're consolidating my parents' bank accounts, and and they had a tangerine account. Well, tangerines all online, and I tried phoning them and waited two hours and gave up. I hit Twitter and copied this uh, chief executive officer of, of Tangerine at Bank of Nova Scotia. I did my homework. Bank of Nova Scotia owns Tangerine. Well, next thing you know, I'm getting a message from the Tangerine people on Twitter, and I got shit done on social networking because Every nobody wants a headline these days, and and I always when I do uh, training with with sheriffs and other people, I talk about headline prevention. So getting people on the record so you have an email trail, and keep in mind, you know, you get into heated discussions when you're doing advocacy for yourself and others, and somebody might send you a long email going, "Blah, blah this is going on, this is going." So you get a five paragraph ass kicking kind of email, you don't need to respond that way. There's a little acronym that I use, it's called BIFF. So B as in Bravo, I-F-F, -F, brief. So when you respond, you don't need to give them a 10 page ask kicker. You simply respond being brief, informative, firm, and friendly. And if you're mm -hmm. speaking to people face to face, getting louder doesn't make you any more correct, you guys. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> so keeping keeping your cool and this 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 even works with family and friends you don't need to get mm -hmm. mad and get loud to get your point because sometimes 
if you quietly make your point or again, use your sense of humor. I, I recall a meeting with uh, a, a number of police officers and they were, I went into this room. We, you've all gone into meetings where you walk in and, and you can tell everybody's mad and angry. You know, I call it piss mist because everybody's pissed off to walk into a meeting. And uh, I walked into this one meeting and there was a lot of angry police officers. And, and, and uh, so they started coming after me and I'm, I don't really, do I have to put my purse down here, you guys? And they looked at each other and burst out laughing and go, what the hell did he just say? But I'm going, look, we have a job to do here. There's no sense getting angry. Let's get our focus and get the job done. So sometimes bringing a little bit of humor can de-escalate. That, that's, uh, that's something that, that's served me well over the years as well. I believe we have two more questions. Uh, Thea, did you have a question? No, I was asked, I wanted to ask uh, both of our speakers if they've ever been misrepresented, have they ever put a position out there and then the media um, either cut it off or added this sentence to this statement and you feel like when you read what you were supposed to have just said, you go, oh, that, that's not what I said and it's not what I meant. That's, there's a price of admission for every decision and when you engage with the media, you will speak and be recorded, whether it's you know radio or television. They're only going to snip ten or fifteen seconds, seconds, and they are going to choose what clips. So, yes, I've 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 been shut down, misrepresented um, in meetings online. But like Michael does, I get my points down and try to deliver those points. And it's sometimes it's 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 a bit of a crapshoot. But generally, if, if you stick to your point and, and deliver your message, um, generally they're going to reflect what you want, what the points that you want to make. But uh, mm -hmm. it doesn't work every time. I mean, we've all got our our uh, our ass kicked in one way or another uh, dealing with media. It's true, and I uh, typically when I think about them in hindsight, I, I walked into it right because sometimes you do. You, you've got your points. You've made them. And then you think, okay, I've made those points. And then one sentence, one sentence can change everything. And then that's the clip. Um, so I would say for the most part, I've been very pleased with, with the coverage. Like I got my story out. But then those times that I didn't, it's usually, damn, I actually did say that. And it's just that one sentence. Letters to the editor are, are another way of, of, of lobbying and make your, making your point. And, and the journal over the years has been pretty favorable to us. But what's important to remember in all of this, when we're dealing with any of this, if, if we don't bring our voice and, and if we are just silence, we allow others to define, to rule and control us. And that's what that's what some people want, is to, to be able to define, rule, and control us. So that's why it's important uh, to make that choice to bring your voice. I see that uh, Larry has raised his hand and Michael as, as well. So we'll start with Larry, and it's probably time for that very last question from Michael. So please go ahead, Larry. Uh, it was as much a comment as anything, but to see whether you agree and I, I'm back on the, the healthcare advocacy uh, part of your talk. First, I remember that the physician or whoever the primary person is, is surrounded by a number of other people and treat them with the respect they deserve. Don't try to bully your way through. And finally, learn people's names. People, and it doesn't matter what their position is, like to be called by their name. Uh, and uh, that's my plea. I see Jackie seems to be agreeing. Thank you. Absolutely, Larry. I concur with that. Mm -hmm. We have three minutes left. Go ahead, Michael. Yeah, so, so I was just uh, a comment in terms of um, uh, being misquoted. Uh, in the days of the Alberta reports, um, where where I they interviewed and and what they wrote was entirely different. Um, after a couple times of that, I refused to to be interviewed by them. 
also went to the city archives and, and would not allow them to look at any of the archives information that they had about gays and lesbians because they, they of, of what they were doing and, be, and because they were stuff that we had contributed kind of thing in that. So sometimes you, you may have to go further uh, for reasons uh, when you're dealing with uh, something like the Alberta Report, who, who's only... Who, what, what they wanted to do was make us look bad no matter what. And they it, they could do that in their writing. So I just stopped. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Any last words, Murray or Jackie? I'm around. If anybody wants to reach out, I'm happy to have a, a chit chat with anybody anytime. I'm, I'm around. Uh, same. I will I'd love to chat with any one of you. And also, this was a lot of fun. I can't believe that went by so quick. Yeah, this is, it was fun. Thank you. So Thank just to you. step in for one second, how do people reach you? My, I'm on all the social net networking and it's Moose John Murray. Mm -hmm. My email is the same thing, Moose John Murray at hotmail.com. I'm that old that yes, I still have hotmail and always will. Murray, 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 hotmail. I didn't even think that existed anymore. Yes, it does. So I'm at Jackie.Ford, F-O-O-R-D, at gmail.com. Thank you, Jackie and Marie, for such a thoughtful and wide-ranging talk. Thank you as well to Kim Lauren for his signing and technical assistance. Thank you. Yay. And, th and thank you to all of you. I hope we will see you next week when our speaker will be Georgette Reed, who will give an overview of being an Olympian. I would like to further ask a favor. We will be sending you a short evaluation questionnaire. Please, please fill it out and return it to us. Your opinions are crucial for planning future programs. You can contact us at the Aging with Pride at pridecenteredmonton.ca. And now I return this meeting back to our host. Everyone, thank you for coming, and we'll see you all next week. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. Bye.